I'm here with Lock Sound ESU and Matt. So Matt, what have you got new in way of decoders and sound? Well, thanks, Joe. We got a number of different things that are new this week. Uh, we have our new 21-pin sound decoder. This is a six-function output low sound select decoder. Uh, we've had 21 pins available in our 4.0 in the past, but uh, we also now have it available in our $99 select decoder. Uh, again, this is a six-function output, 1.1 amp decoder that will be now used in a lot of the manufacturer's engines. Uh, this, this decoder has not only all six function outputs in the plug, which is a little step above the eight pin plug, which only has three, but it also has your speaker, your motor, your pickups, everything is there in that plug. So the manufacturers really like the idea that if there's ever a problem, people don't have to send their engines back in for repair anymore. And this, in this day and age of kind of made to order engines, yeah. you may not ever get another engine back if the mail destroys it. So if you can easily take your shell off, pop that plug right out, send it back into myself or the manufacturer, we'll send you a new one in the mail and you plug it right in and away you go. It's so, a, so a very quick and, so it's not, and dirty install. It's not like the old decoders where you have to start clipping wires if you got more than a couple of functions. Exactly, exactly. Great. Now, you know, that being said, though, there's a lot of people that have old man or old locomotives that don't have a DCC plug. So for that, we've come up with our low sound select direct. And it, with this board, it's very similar to the, you know, the Atlas style of board or the Atherin Genesis style of board that is just a flat replacement board. Uh, what we've done here is we've designed it so that we don't have to have a board for every manufacturer. It's a universal board that has the motor mount holes for all the different manufacturers that are out there that have a similar board. Uh, we've got you know, a slot for Stewart. Uh, we have the holes for Intermountain and Bowser. We have the clips for Athern and Atlas. Everything is right there on the board. There's also no components on the back of the board so that right. depending on where that goes in the engine, you don't have to worry about that interfering with a motor or anything else. And we've aligned those so that it fits in most older engines. So. Great. Uh, there's again, six function outputs on that board. There's uh, LED resistance built into that board for the use of LEDs, which is most nice. common these days. So um, it's just a very, very universal, nice board to use. It's just flat and clean, and we've really had a lot of success with that. Good. If you do need to hardwire, and, uh, or you have an eight pin plug, we also have our six function regular select. Again, these are you know $99 boards. This one's a little more expensive to make, so that's a $110 board, but they're all within that $100 range, which is kind of average among the industry. Uh, this decoder, again, same exact features as this decoder, same hardware. This one has an 8-pin plug, though, for a quick DCC install with something that already has that 8-pin plug. We also have our, our micro board. This is a four-function output micro. Uh, again, it has all all the same sounds available for all of our decoders because we're programmable decoders, Joe, so that we can download any sound that we make into any decoder we make. So this could be used for a small engine in HO. It could be used for N scale. Um, it does have an 8-pin plug on it, so if you have a small HO engine that has an 8-pin plug, you can still utilize that. This is a four-function output decoder, which I may have already mentioned, but um, it also has the logic for six function total. So if you would add transistors to this board, you now have a $99 micro decoder with no heat sinks or anything else. That's full motion and sound for, you know, with the, the capabilities of having six functions. Uh, very, very nice little decoder. Kind of fits anywhere you can think of. We also have a, a few other new products, one being a new 16 by 35 speaker. Uh, that's a, an 8 ohm speaker. All of our decoders are set up so that they're designed to work the best with the 4 ohm speaker. We have the power to provide that. You know, with things being so small, we wanted to give the option to make things as loud as we can possibly be. Good. We're also editing our sounds so that they're much louder, so that you can utilize that 4 ohm speaker. But we've decided on a few projects, this speaker size is so common, it works in every narrow hood unit HO engine. And it, it's got, Beautiful bass response. Again, it's eight ohms, so you know, we, while we like you to use it with our products, it's also usable with everybody else's as well. Um, we have our, our 36 gauge wire on display here. Now this isn't a brand new product, but 
everybody that seems to realize we have these runs out and grabs it. They just love this product. It's a stranded product that has all the NMRA colors. Great for DCC installs of any kind. Um, if, we, uh, if we have a minute, I'd like to show you some of the new sounds or explain to some of the differences that we're doing yeah, in our decoders. Yeah. So, Love to see it. All right, sounds good. Why don't we step over to the layout here and we can show you some of the engines that we have coming up. One of the engines that we're working with that's going to be coming out very shortly is the Atlas RS3. Uh, this is a brand new 12 cylinder Alco 244. It's got that throaty Alco chug that we've been, you know, that everybody likes so much. Uh, it's, it's kind of unmistakable. It does that Alco rock if you let it sit still. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful sound, one of my favorites. Yeah. We're also working on a brand new 567 sound that a number of the different manufacturers are going to be using. Now, one of the things that we've done a little bit different is we've added both the manual transition and the automatic transition. Um, if, you're, if you ever listen to an early 567, as it goes up through its notches, it's usually at a certain speed, but uh, in our decoder, it's about notch, uh, you know, between notch three and notch four, it'll drop down to idle, and it'll come back up again and build oh, itself back nice. up to notch four. We, not every engine did that, though, so we didn't want to make that, you know, the default. You know, we wanted to be able to give you the option to not have that, so we've also built it with one CV to change. You can change it so that it does not have that manual transition. That way your 567 can finally be accurate for whatever prototype you're modeling. Now, there is no one size fits all for any of this stuff. So, uh, We recently provided Intermountain with sound for the Intermountain Jeevos. Uh, this is a Jeevo 12 cylinder. It's got a lot of really neat features. It's got uh, smart start in it, so as nice. the engine sits still for a while, it'll shut itself down. After a few minutes, it'll start itself back up again. It has the bell that plays automatically when the horn blows, like a lot of the modern GEs do. Uh, it's got a low idle to it. After it sits for a little bit, it'll drop down into a skip beat, uh, just like the real Jeevos do. Um, we've got, uh, we're working with the, the uh, Rapido on their FP9. Now this is their sound, this is their 567 recordings that we're gonna go through and edit. They've done a wonderful job with their recordings. Now we're combining our great motor control with their sounds and a beautiful engine. So they've done a really nice job. Very nice. We've made the P42 sounds for the Cato P42s that are out there. They're installing some of that from the factory. They've really done a nice job with this model. It's got beautiful coreless motors. And our, our decoders are really designed to work well with coreless motors. The P42s have a lot of neat features. Of course, one of them that everybody keeps asking about is, does it have HEP? And yes, it definitely does. Uh, and at P42, the HEP will, will make the prime mover run at about 900 RPM, right around that range. Ours does exactly that. If the HEP is on, it takes it to 900 RPM and it stays there as long as that's on. If the HEP is off, it'll run through the notches just like a regular GE. We've done the, the Baldwin DS44-1000 for Bowser. That's a, just an outstanding sound. It just, it has that burble oh. that, that Baldwins are known for. So we got some really good things going there. Um, we did the cab forward sound for Inner Mountain. Those are all new recordings from, uh, you know, brand new whistles, brand new horns. Got the, the, the real Southern Pacific air horn on the front of it. It's oh, got excellent. that great articulation that's really needed and that real throaty chuff that it needs to have. That's, that's right. Very uh, good. All right. Well, thanks, Matt. Thank you, Joe. Have a great day. Train Masters TV, coming this fall, only from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine.